that's the Peanuts tune, Linus and Lucy, performing it Frank Cassera and Ingrid Gordon on the marimba. Wait, how's a marimba different from a xylophone? Serena Olshul clears that up. Let's face it. Most of us don't know the marimba beyond the ringtone. But believe it or not, this instrument has been a big part of our musical history. So maybe this group doesn't look familiar. But you may recognize Brian Jones on marimba with the Rolling Stones. The marimba was also a big sound in the 1980s. Even new musicians are taking to the mallet. So what exactly is a marimba? It's part of the percussion family of instruments. A lot like its cousin, the xylophone. But with a lower range of notes. The marimba and the xylophone have wooden keys and need these pipes, called resonators, to amplify sound. Matt Coe, owner of Coe Percussion, knows a thing or two about marimbas. He makes them in the basement of his Tallahassee home. He says business is booming. I have a list of orders and I'm trying to keep up and it's not easy. <laughs> Likely brought to Europe and the New World through the slave trade, mallet instruments like the xylophone and marimba trace their roots to Africa. In the Central African language of Bantu, marimba means wood that sings. Problem is, that wood is running out. That means that the future of the marimba is uncertain. Um, at least new marimbas. The one thing about rosewood is it lasts for a very long time. So there's instruments that have been around for 100 years, and they still sound perfectly good. Honduras rosewood has been the wood of choice for marimba makers since the late 19th century. Grown only in a few parts of Central America, the wood is responsible for the instrument's unique sound. But in 2008, the tree was added to the endangered species list. So I hear that it's really a 10-year supply. That's right. So musicians that play the instrument, do they feel, will they feel a sense of real loss when they can't play on the rosewood? <laughs> yes, I think they will. Frank Kumor is a professor of music at Kutztown University in Pennsylvania, adopted home of all things marimba. The reason for that has much to do with this man, marimba virtuoso Claire Omar Musser. Born in 1901 near Kutztown, he put the marimba in the American spotlight by staging concerts across the country, featuring a hundred marimbas at a time. He even invented a few of his own. I think he really was that type of scientific thinker, and I think that really sort of led to some of the developments that we know. This is one Musser development. He called it a celestophone, fitting because the bars are made of melted meteorites. And here's another Musser original. What is this front piece? Okay, well, it's a sousaphone bell, so wow. you might see from a marching band, and he was working with amplification. So at one point, there was a speaker piece that would go into the top of that sousaphone bell and project it out through the bell. Whether the future of the marimba depends on another wood or a synthetic product, it's unlikely that this ever-evolving instrument will go away. Matt Coe is counting on that. I'm gonna have to keep making marimba somehow, so I'll have to come up with an alternative. Until then, we'll keep listening to this wood as it continues to sing. Bravo! <laughs>